So rough ground fishing, a lot of people tend to use a float. Me personally, I never use a float, I'm always fishing on the bottom. Uh, a lot of people don't like fishing on the bottom because it's really snaggy. Uh, you lose a lot of gear. So I'm going to try and talk you through different ways that you can sort of like minimize your gear loss. Multipliers, people don't like them. You get bird's nests. It's part of it. But a lot of the reason why people use multipliers, especially on rough ground, they multiply. That's the purpose of it. So the rotation of this six to one compared to like a fixed spool but which will only be five to one that means that it gets your lead off the bottom quicker which is what you want have your rods big thicker rods now you don't have to go out and spend a fortune on you know top of the range rods each one of my setups is 200 pound you know fair enough in the, in the long run if you are going to be like fishing all around rough ground beaches you know it does add up it's 200 pound per setup and two setups per one unless you're match fishing then you only use one uh you don't have to use multipliers like i said this reel i've only just started using it it's an akuma 8k surf i've seen a few videos on this of boys pulling sharks in and thought you heard that's interesting uh you have a lot of the heavier sort of fixed spools you know pen spin fishers and stuff like that there that are used for heavier ground so you don't actually need to use multipliers at the end of the day the fish don't care what rod and what rig you're using for me i'll be expert these rods are now discontinued i've never had a problem with fishing heavy ground with this rod um plenty of power in it you can throw eight ounces with it with the big bait you know, a lot of our fishing, I wouldn't really say it is out far, it's more in close. But the more in close you are, the more rockier and weedier it is. So you do want something, especially on rough ground, for just a, just something to give you a bit more grunt compared to using just your standard, you know, fixed bow sort of setup that you'd be using over like clean ground with your flapper rakes and stuff like that there. So you will just end up breaking the rod or your reel, I've seen this multiple times. So spending a wee bit more money on higher end gear. Now, like I said, this is it's more mid tier gear. It's a Fathom Fifteen, uh, Black Dog Mag. I send it away, get it magged. It just allows it you to like slow the rotation of it down. So this is what I would be using for rough ground. Uh, Abu E Spirit and a Pen Fathom Fifteen. The rigs I would use would be. Pretty much every single time when you're rough ground fishing will always be a pulley rig with one single hook using Viking hooks or uptagging hooks. I'm going to go through the pulley rig uh, different ways but you always want to be fishing with a rotten bottom. Um, you will lose leads but losing one lead is better than losing the whole rig as well as a shock leader. So there's different ways of doing a rotten bottom rig. There's cheap ways, there's ways that, for me personally, that I've found that they work to a certain extent, but mm, obviously you don't really know what's going on under the water. So, the likes of a cami link, and I'll, I'll, I will show you this here whenever I'm making the rigs up. When you're pulling it in, it's, it's like a sea, a metal sea, which your weight goes on to. If you're pulling it this way, and the hook is this way, to me, it's going to get snagged. So, cami links, I'm not all too much of a fan of. The whole purpose of fishing rough ground, you will find bigger fish in rough ground, but you're trying to minimize the amount of tackle loss as well. Line that I use when rough ground fishing. Now, this stuff, it's not actually, it's not made for rough ground. I will always pretty much use a 70 pound litre. I use Parflax by Ultima. I've tried other stuff, Grease Weasel. Um, I think there's a, there's a couple of other brands that I've tried and somehow I, I just always end up back at Parflax by Ultima. It's nice stuff. So I'll not use a tapered leader when fishing rough ground either. Tapered leaders are more expensive. I will literally just use this. 
and if I'll go through my leader knot that I would use. Let me just pull this out though and talk about the actual main line. A lot of people don't use leaders when fishing rough ground. What they'll do is they'll just use their main line, but just up the breaking strain of their main line. Most people would use 15 pound line when fishing beaches or you know clean ground. Uh, and then once they are out fishing, maybe heavier ground, they'll use like thirty pound and just go straight thirty pound. Some people use braid. I know people use eighty pound braid, just straight through, just so you can drag it through, you know, the kelp and putting it through rocks and stuff. I wouldn't recommend braid on rocks. Some people use braid and then use a shock leader as well. But let's talk about this line. So this line. Is made by a company called Dip. It is the same diameter as 15 pound line, but it's actually 35 pound breaking strain. The reason why I like this, it's not so much because of the breaking strain and the diameter. In a sense, it is. If you're casting in the heavy ground all the time, say you're there for six hours, and you get snagged maybe twice an hour if you're using two setups. Sometimes it will be more than that. It really just depends on where you're fishing. You're going to start losing line and line and line. And eventually, if you're using 30 pound line that is thicker diameter, by the time you finish your trip, you're going to have no line left up on your reel. You're going to go through a lot of line if you're fishing rough ground. So this just allows me to have a lot more line on the spool. That's the main reason I like it. Something I actually started doing, instead of using leads, I generally use 6 inch grip leads whenever rough ground fishing. They're going to get snagged, it doesn't matter. But something I started doing last year, if you go to a beach, a pebble dash beach, you generally find pebbles, obviously. Um, but you can find ones that are pretty good regarding like their weight. What I, I did was I got a diamond drill head bit, drilled a hole into it, and then put fishing line into it and made a loop. So you can use that for your rotten bottom, like the weight on the rotten bottom, instead of using your layers. This is the most expensive bit of the rig. Uh, so this is the bit that you're trying not, not to lose sort of defeats the purpose whenever you're using a rotten ball. So what I would do is use the rock with the loop and then you tie a weaker bit of line to the actual rotten bottom. Use the, the thicker loop. I'll show you all this here uh, whenever I'm going through the rigs. Use the thicker loop and put that onto the actual rotten bottom so then whenever it hits the, the seabed it comes off and then you're on the weaker bit of line. That's the whole purpose of a rotten bottom. Um, like I said, you don't have to use multipliers. You can use fixed bows, but I wouldn't be using your wee 20 pound reel. Um, I would definitely suggest not so much the cheaper sort of gear whenever it comes to rough ground. Uh, they're not really made for it, they're not robust. Um, you're going to need to put a lot of force into your rod your line, your rail, everything, whenever you're trying to break the lead or the rock or bend your hook out or whatever it may be. So I highly recommend this rail. It's not expensive, it's 80 quid. Um, 40 pound drag system on it, which is really, really big. You, you'll never use 40 pound drag system over here. Um, but there's plenty of grunt in it. Uh, the only difference would be is I would change, I would get it like a spur spoon and then put heavier line on it compared to using this. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything I can like sort of talk about. Of course, like I said, I will show the rig. I'm going to go through a couple of different rigs in one of the segments here. Um, so yeah, multipliers or heavier fixed spoons. Heavier rods, thicker rods. You'll, you'll generally notice that multiplier rods unless it's a match stag rod, uh, the tip on them is a lot thicker and that's just to allow you to put a lot more grunt
rod into it, but plower rods as well have more eyes on it. <coughs> um, me personally, I like to use reel down. Uh, if you're only new in the multipliers, I would definitely say take it out to a field, cast it, try and slow it down. Don't buy something that's really, really cheap as well that doesn't have magnets. Try and buy something that has magnets. A good starting point, I would say, for a multiplier is a pen 5-5. I would say get the US version, not the China made version. It's a lot more robust. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I can talk about whenever it comes to rough ground fishing. There's loads, most of our most of the ground in Northern Ireland is rough ground. Uh, like I said, Garn Point, uh, Remore Head, Port Stewart, Dunsarvrick, you know, there's a lot. If it's not a beach, then it's rough ground pretty much, unless you're in Red Bay. Um, so, yes, that concludes this segment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.